Freaky fun for everyone, sold set. Leonardo, the Katana Blade. My God. Attack the evil and humanoid, forcing him back into the earth. Hey, the name's Boglet, you sold separately. Uh, that lover, he never scared of her, eat so separately. You put them out together. Send them into the light, and they change into even more powerful. A battle against Lion O and the new Thundercat ally. is a deep question are we really here I, well i arrived and you were here <laughs> have you arrived can you say that you have arrived i feel like i can say that because i feel like i'm here you know yeah but having arrived is more than just like being there like you you gotta walk in and be able to say i have arrived well when i walked in the door i was like oh i'm here <laughs> So I, I thought that was pretty much, that's what that meant. Alright guys, welcome back to That New Toy Smell. This is the final episode of 2014. Woohoo! Yeah! Just cranking them out like clockwork. Oh my god, we got like we, so we have, busy in the work. <laughs> we have not done this as a regular, regularly scheduled thing, which has been nice yeah. in some ways because we haven't been scrambling at the last minute trying to throw something together. And I think in, in, in a certain sense that's helped to keep it from just being you know, a bunch of random clips that we film because we have to film something to throw it together to say that we got something. So, you know, on the one hand, that kind of uh, helps. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's discipline. I mean, it's yeah. Discipline. <laughs> but yeah. Discipline. I mean, it's it's been tough to get back in the groove of doing this show. But hey, you're getting your end of the year holiday wrap up Christmas episode thon thing, whatever we're doing. So. Thong. You like thongs? No. This is our Actually, holiday G string episode, you could say. <laughs> Go ahead and stand up and show them what you're wearing. <laughs> so, as you can see here, we've got Mutant Mania toys. We're going to be talking about these a little later. We're also going to be talking about uh, some of the cool stuff that happened this year, some of the toy lines we're excited about, or maybe some of the ones we're less than excited about uh, that came out this year. Uh, we also have some gifts here uh, from people that we're going to uh, open and uh, show off, talk about, whatever. So, anything uh, you want to get to, anything special, any special message you want to give the people as we as we unload the final end of the year holiday Christmas spectacular of that new toy smell for 2014? Yeah, I just want to throw some show, shout outs to my, all my baby mamas. How many are there? Well... Mamas. <laughs> There's some, some of them haven't come forward and identified themselves. Ah, now, I just like to give out shout out mm. to all of them. And uh, super shout outs to all of you guys who continue to watch our shows even though they are very infrequent. And uh, continue to give us thumbs up for the video <laughs> likes and to continue watching. So I hope you continue that throughout the next year. Mm. So unto you I say thank you. Man. Yeah, All right, so let's take a moment here to look at the wonderful lineup of Mutant Mania toys. Everyone knows I'm a huge fan of minifigures and also professional wrestling. So when I got the chance to take a look at the new Mutant Mania toys from Moose Toys, you know I had to jump in and do it. You can take a look at the figures and see that there's obviously a lineage of minifigures that led to the new Mutant Mania toys, starting with Muscle and Ultimate Muscle, Kaniku Man, you know. Uh, and then moving on to Fistful of Power, which was actually from Moose Toys. Moose Toys also went on to do the Trash Pack, and now Mutant Mania. Mutant Mania is kind of a mix between the Trash Pack, Garbage Pail Kid type figures, and the old muscle figures that we all grew up with, and of course we all loved. So let's take a look at what these toys actually have to offer. Mutant Mania figures come in these cans that emulate the drink that turns them into the mutant monsters that they eventually become. You can see it looks like a pop top can, but actually it opens like the old trash pack trash cans. 
Inside you'll find the Mutant Mania figure comes in a variety of pieces and there's also some paperwork. First thing you'll notice is this instruction to get rid of the white plug in the torso back of your figure. It's just there basically to keep the figure from collapsing upon itself in transport, so you're just going to throw that away. It's of no use whatsoever. You also get this sheet that tells about the different factions, the different characters available. Of course, it's a handy checklist in case you feel the need to go and collect them all. And, you know, some of us do. Finally, though, you can see the figure is lying here in its different pieces because you can mix and match them. You take the green spongy spine thing and you attach it to the head. You then attach it to the legs. And then you stretch it out so you can pop the torso into place. Making the figure this way not only gives it the opportunity for mixing and matching, but it also gives it some flexibility. You can move the head, you can move the legs, things bend, things twist. Kind of makes it a little bit more of an action figure than your standard muscle type figures. There are four packs available that unfortunately don't come with one of the mutant cans, uh, but it does give you the opportunity to grab a bunch of figures that you can mix and match. And one thing of note is that they always come with extra little green spine rubbery things. That way if yours happens to break uh, or something terrible happens to it, you do have the opportunity to have a backup to repair your figure with. The eight packs do come with one of the soda cans and it comes with a much larger one that can actually hold a lot of different figures. And again, not only do you get eight figures in this pack, two of them featured in the window so you know who you're getting, but it also comes with a couple extra green spines in case any of yours break and need to be fixed. One thing to note about the can lid is that it does have little foot pegs there. All of the Mutant Mania figures have tiny little holes in the feet. So you can actually use the can as not only storage, but as a display piece by putting the figures on the pegs and then showing how they face off. There are tons of different figures to collect, and every figure has an alternate version you can try to hunt down. It's some sort of translucent clear version, and they're not always packed together. Sometimes you'll find one in a, a single pack, and the matching one comes in an eight pack. You just never know where they're going to be. But for a lot of people, that's part of the fun of collecting. The Mutant Mauler truck comes with an exclusive figure that you can't find anywhere else, and it actually has a lot of play options besides the fact that it's just a truck. The hood of the truck opens, and you can see that there's an engine inside. It also gives you a chance to stuff one of your figures in, if he fits. If he wants to stick his hand out, you might have to push him in there a little bit harder to make him fit. But you also have the passenger and driver's side doors that slide out, and they have a foot peg where you can attach a figure to the inside. Now one of the things that's supposed to happen is that this front thing on the bumper, when you push it, the doors are supposed to pop out. Of course, I only had a success rate of about 1 in 20 times pushing on it to get the door to actually open. Now the truck actually opens up, and you can find that there's a lot more to do inside than outside. First thing you'll notice is what looks like this torture rack with the unfortunate Muscle Mania figure stretched inside, but actually that's to help you put them together. 
It's a little bed that helps you put the pieces uh, together so you can mix and match them easily. Also makes a nice little ejector piece. Woo! You can launch the guy in the air. Sometimes though they launch better than others, but you know, your mileage may vary. You also have, if you look closely here, a storage compartment in the back. Looks kind of like a little jail cell or, I don't know, trash can. Uh, but inside you've got space where you can put several figures. There's also foot pegs all over this thing. So if you want to use this as a display piece, it also turns into kind of a halfway decent little playset where you can actually put a lot of figures on display and show them to all your friends. Of course, one of the things that gets me the most excited is this Mutant Mania Wrestling Ring playset. You not only have an entryway in the back and the uh, stands for all the people who want to come watch, but the wrestling ring has this interactive game feature. It's similar to the old muscle wrestling ring where you press the buttons here and your figures move back and forth. You can twist them left and right and basically try to knock the other guy apart. The entryway portion of the playset actually comes in three different pieces. These stands can each be detached, and they have the foot pegs for your figures like you've come to expect on the rest of the Mutant Mania line. But you also have this little flip out pad here with a launcher in the back, so you can take your fight out into the stands and have it go crazy, or maybe even have some of the guys in the crowd get involved. Now the entryway does have this break apart entrance here that actually looks really cool. There's something about this entryway that I just really love. The way it's got the metal walkway, it's got the uh, girders on the side, everything about it reads modern professional wrestling. So grab your muscles, your ultimate muscles, your fistful of powers, your trash packs, heck, even go grab those squinkies you still have laying around. Bring everyone down to the arena. Get out your pyro, grab your smoke machine, put on your best spandex shorts, and let's Get ready to rumble. All right, so there you go. There are your Mutant Mania wrestlers. You Woo! can build them and customize them. Woo! And make them fight. Woo! That was exciting. <laughs> now, two things about this wrestling ring playset is that one, obviously, I like it because A, I like wrestling, and B, it reminds me of the old muscle figure ring. Uh, muscle figures had that ring that they would fight with. You know, back in the day, and yeah, I always, they had a rock 'em sock 'em. I also, yeah, uh, they weren't spring loaded. You would just push them forward and back with your hands, but they would bump into each other until one of them would fall off the thing. Um, so obviously, I like that because it reminds me of the old muscle ring. Um, but the other thing is, um, and this is not necessarily I like or dislike, but it's kind of a, a trend that's been happening over the past few years in play sets. Is that play sets used to be contained? like all in one pieces. And I, I really noticed it back with Thundercats when the uh, Tower of Omens came out, is that play sets now are becoming more and more of a collection of pieces that you arrange to make your own layout and your own set. Um, they're no longer like the self-contained all in one piece. Like, you know, Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain, even though you would fold it open, everything was still right there. You know, whereas nowadays it's becoming more about here's a piece that you play with, here's a piece that you play with, and you can, you know, however you want to set it up, you can set it up and change it. But then the offset of that is that it doesn't all fold back together and it's not all self-contained. I'm pretty support. sure that it just has something to do with being cheaper and less plastic -y. I'm sure it is. It also allows a bigger flexibility in how you can design these things because you don't have to worry so much about everything kind of collapsing back on itself. Like I said, it's not necessarily I like or dislike, but it is something that I've noticed that more and more toy play sets have been doing with that type of thing. So do you like it or dislike it? <laughs> I'm not sure Okay. Yet. Um, but, but I do like this ring. I think that's really cool. Now this truck... truck Fresh test on me? Truck? We're, we're, not, we're not as sold on this truck. Okay, so... I guess, and I haven't played with this yet, so I'm just gonna figure it out as we're talking. That doesn't work. That doesn't. It's supposed to eject the, the seats in the front of the truck, but I could never get it to work. I 
Maybe it's not doing it right. It's, it's supposed to make these pop open. And you can hear that they're spring loaded. <laughs> well, did that just happen? Or did <laughs> I not get That's it? not supposed to do it. Okay. Well, anyway, so it's just a truck. I mean, you know, just another random accessory or toy for the line. Uh, as with all the uh, lines that this company has spat Fist out. Fistful of power. Uh, the, uh, trash pack? Trash pack. Yes. Yeah. I can't want to say garbage pail kids. So basically, with those, they all did a, a similar style, just a random vehicle. Um, right, they, had a, they actually had, had a trash truck right. for trash pack guys. So, do they have one for the other one? Another one? A fistful of power? No. Fistful of power. But that was the first one, so, so yeah, they've I mean, grown. This is a good, I mean, this is a good toy, especially if you get some more solid, if you get more figures with it, which I'm sure you do, but... Um, I mean, you know, well, well, I mean, okay. It gives you more play options versus just the round. Well, plus, I mean, it's got lots of foot pegs, so you can, you know, put the guys in here if you want to have them display on your shelf. Wait a minute, you played with this before. This, there's your eject button. Here's your little uh, storage compartment that you can drop the extra pieces in so you don't lose them. You know, one of the things that you were mentioning when we were talking about this off camera is that um, you don't like the feel of these guys because they are in pieces with this kind of rubber band fine yeah i don't like the way which i'm sure you mentioned in the video of how they're put together right yeah okay so because you can customize them so it's the idea of being okay, able to so take them apart here, and here's the problem the like obviously as you can see you can pull these apart and see the bike fell off i don't like the fact when i touch this that it feels it feels flimsy like i feel like i mean obviously if you're careful you're fine but if, if i'm like if i'm a kid and i'm playing with this and as kids get you know, their grubby little hands, if you grab at things and, and, and twist them over the they're going to snap this thing fairly quick. Well, right, but but every set that you buy comes with at least one extra little spine piece, that's if not, not gonna, more. That's not going to do it. What they should have done, and, and I understand that they're interchangeable, which is great. They should have just made it a solid plastic piece where these snap into place and there's no uh, rubber flimp, you know, uh, rubber band feel to it because then. I, mean, I like the fact that you can angle them a little bit in their positioning, just the way they stand. But I just don't like the way they feel, and it's such a like weird nitpicky thing. But if once you put one of these in your hand and you just kind of play with it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Well, part of it is um, like with this truck, for instance. You can take the head and you can take the legs and you attach them to the body, and then it's got this little bench in here where you actually stick the guys in and you stretch them. So it's almost like a torture rack type of thing, but then you can also drop the body on top, and then you hit that eject seat, and it's all pieced together. So that's part of the tool for the customizing. Well, come on. So they made it work with one toy. Good. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> but it's the torture as rack. As a collector, because I, you know, obviously I like mini figures. They're some of my favorite things to collect. But this just does not feel right. All right. You used to hold the apples, and you. You grab a, a pineapple, it's gonna be wrong. <laughs> this is a pineapple. My my biggest thing is just that this eject thing, I, I've never gotten it to work right. It's supposed to make these pop out when you hit that eject button, but I can just never quite get it to go. And part of it is, if you look on the inside, there's like a little nub right there yeah. and all it's doing is pushing and it's supposed to make these things unlock and slide out well we just got a defective truck or they're all defective. I don't know. do you have more ones no i only have th this is they only make this blue one so i only have this blue truck no i mean you don't have another one i don't have another blue okay. truck well maybe we just got a defective truck it's possible but you know so what who cares I mean, these are just add-ons to the line because we really know this is not important this is this is the, the main cool thing, and Toys R Us has had these on sale a lot. After Christmas, if these go on some sort of clearance where they're like five bucks or something, I'm probably gonna buy a couple extras just to buy a couple extras, and maybe even put like WCW logos on them or you know so something like that. Maybe you're gonna do that because you have a toy addiction. Problem. That is true. I Not will so totally agree with. You're trying to like justify why, like if they go on clearance, I'll buy them. You're gonna buy them anyways. No, I, I I bought these anyway. The clearance will be. I'll like, buy. I'll, the clearance will be for buying extra. It'd be like, 
five percent off. You're like, well, they're on clearance, and then you'll go and you'll buy more. You know, it's like when the uh, the Thunder Tank hit five bucks. Like I now own three of those. Yeah, but why? Because they were five bucks. Yeah, but what are you gonna do it's with a Thunder Tank? You are a toy hoarder. And and I will be seeing you on an episode of Hoarders today. <laughs> <laughs> Not toy hunter, toy hoarder. Maybe this all right, now, like we said, we had some uh, Christmas gifts um, that were sent in. Here is uh, Scotty and Rick. They were unable to make it for filming as usual, uh, but they do have their gifts at home, so they decided to unwrap them on camera. So here, let's take a look, jerk, at Scotty and Rick opening up their Christmas goodies. Get it right. Hey, everybody, what's up? Happy holidays. How's everybody doing out there? Are you liking the new show? I've been pretty busy lately trying to get out there and do that music thing, you know, so if you'd like to you'd like to check it out, you'd like to support what I got going on, ReverbNation.com, Sunny Deadwood. I've got lots of demo stuff up there and I'm working on a record right now, so um, hopefully I'll have that out there soon. But today I just wanted to take a second and thank all of the fans for all of your support and for sticking with us through all this time and uh, just kind of recap on what, what's been going on for the holidays, you know. Um, so. I mean, that's really pretty much it. I've just been out there working on writing music, playing shows, and, and, and doing that thing. So that's, that's you know, what keeps me away from, uh, from actually participating in that new toy smell the way that I'd like to. But um, I actually did receive some fan gifts, and I wanted to say thank you to uh, Adam Ernst, you know. Um, I got this uh, little thing here, and I thought I'd actually open it on camera just to, uh, you know, just to say thanks. Oh, what? Oh, yeah! Check that out. Mitten Package Masters of the Universe Viewmaster cards. That's what's up. That is pretty sweet, sir. Thank you very much. I will. Yeah, I mean, you can't see. You can't see it, but the, the He Man wall's over here. So it will definitely. It will definitely get hung up. And uh, actually, I wanted to, wanted to say thanks to Lord Gillen. Because thanks to him, I now have life, as long as I keep my glass almost full. Anyway, that's that's it for me, guys. Happy holidays. Thanks for tuning in, and, and thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you soon. Hey, guys. Sorry I couldn't make this year's Christmas special of That New Toy Smell. Uh, just been really busy. I know. Blah, 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 blah. I'm always busy, busy, but I am. Um, I talked to a guy on Facebook, Adam Ernest, from time to time about Power Rangers, the toys sometimes, just random stuff, and a couple months ago he goes, you know what, this year I'm going to send you guys some Christmas gifts. And I forgot all about it until Dirk called me up and said, uh, hey, you got a Christmas gift here. So Adam sent me a Christmas gift. I'm about to open it right now. And this is like, this is, um, this is just one take, because unless I'm going to rewrap it and, and, and cut action. Just want to say in advance, thank you, Adam. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers play set. Color forms stick like magic. Oh, this is definitely going to be opened. Why not do it now? Let's see what we got here. This is like a, a present in, inside of a present. Still got the wrapper on it. Dude, this is official. This is awesome. Hmm. Holy smokes. Oh, okay, so it's like stickers and stuff. And you put them on the and you put them on the uh, the backdrops and you could you could move them how you want. So if I want to put, you know, Billy and uh, you know, Billy and Trini. Let's see, is there two sheets here? Are these like magnets? I think they're magnets. Let's see, are all five, one, two, three, four. All five Rangers are on here. Then you got Sphinx, uh, Babu, a couple putties. Man, you even got their weapons on there. Goldar, uh, Swiss Squat, Squat, Squat. But anyway, thank you so much, Adam. I really appreciate it. This will go with my other Power Ranger collection. Um, if I don't see you guys, have an awesome, awesome Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Wow, those gifts look amazing. <laughs>
didn't they though? <laughs> that was that was the greatest Viewmaster and color form set I've ever seen. Is that random? Yeah, that's okay. good. <laughs> All right, we'll go back and do that one later. All right. All right, so uh, now we're going to do a little bit of a news and discussion and talk about some toys and whatnot. Uh, the very first thing I want to talk about before we do anything else is I have to talk about this ridiculous. <laughs> if we have to talk about the best toys coming out soon of the year, this is going to be it for me. Uh, we have the Fart Flinger. <laughs> Of the what? The fart flinger. What is the fart flinger? The fart flinger is a fart capturing and releasing weapon. Hmm. So here's the idea. Uh, what you do is basically you take uh, you take the gun. It has like a kind of like a toilet seat on one side uh, <laughs> opening. Okay. All right. And what you do is when you get the fart, you, you put the it up to your butt and you fart into the gun. Okay. And the gun captures your fart, okay? And then when you're done with that, you take the gun and with like a super soaker action, <laughs> you shoot it at somebody and it shoots all that fart and compressed air into their face. Hmm. And it's called the fart flinger. The fart flinger. Who makes that? Uh, let me see. I don't know if it's necessarily enough. Uh... Made by two brothers. This will be our company's first product called the Buttercup Group. The Buttercup Group. I swear, I swear if I if I <laughs> see this, I'm buying it. I'm buying it. My uh, wife will uh, film my raft. I will probably keep one at the store to uh, shoot uh, Rick and you at times. Hmm. I wonder if I don't like how long how long do you think you can bottle a fart I don't think to you, spray it out I, at someone I don't think you have much time like, I'm pretty I mean sure that seems like something you, it would have to be hot and fresh yeah oh yeah you would want it to you're gonna, you want to capture it's like a good you're a ghostbuster and you're capturing a ghost and then you gotta get it in that containment unit okay because that, that trap is not meant to hold a ghost forever I wonder if it's one of those things where you gotta bottle up like five of them to get a good spray I don't think you can bottle more and more like, I don't know. I don't know mechanics of it. I don't have the gun yet. But once I figure the science out, I'll let you know. Is, is that your top toy of 2014? That is my top toy. <laughs> and it's not even out yet. But I, I've... Uh, and as you, you can see the pictures and everything that hopefully you put on the thing. Uh, it's currently on Kickstarter. Oh, I didn't know that. It's on Kickstarter. Oh. Well, hold on. Oh, wow. I have here. to go pledge my... Uh, it's not over, is it? You didn't miss it, did you? No, it's got 25 days to go. Okay, so... Okay. Uh, oh, they got oh, a long way to yeah. go. Yeah, they're trying to get ninety thousand dollars, and they're only at three hundred. On the time of filming, three hundred forty-eight dollars. Ninety thousand seems pretty high. That's that's a super ambitious goal. Uh, and they show a picture of somebody getting a dog's fart. <laughs> uh, so uh, going to have to back this project. I don't care. Make it or break it. I'm still backing this one. I gotta know what the prices are to back this because. As long as it's reasonable. Uh, oh, you don't. You're not lumped in. Oh, okay. oh, there you go. Yeah. Starts at two, four. Uh, How much to actually get one? Koozie, fart flinger, twenty-five. Yes. Yeah. Twenty-five dollars. Oh, twenty-five dollars. Uh, that's right on the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. I'm backing it. Twenty-five dollars for a fart flinger gun. Yeah. There's. Uh, there's only two remaining of the 25. I'm doing it right now. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. Then they charge you $15 shipping. Oh, are you serious? So $40. No, oh, no, no, no. you just lost me. You just see, lost me. See, that's the problem right there. You just lost me, Fart Flinger. What are you doing? $40. For, $15 is a lot to ship for that shipping. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you lost me. Well, it was better luck next time. Hey, go get the uh, Mega Bucks card. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, he's off grabbing that. I want to talk about the Hikari Spider-Man figure. Um, this is one of those things from Funko. Uh, they've been doing these Hikari figures where you have to order them within a limited time. Um, they only have 2,000 available. Um, they are funky looking figures. And, of course, their Skeletor looks like a disco Skeletor. So, of course... I had to get one of these. I own one of these. Uh, Killen owns one of these. 
I, I don't know if they specifically thought, well, we're going to make it look like disco, or they just wanted some funky colors, and that's what they came up with. And it's very much in the vein of the disco Skeletor look. Um, but I love this little guy because he's disco Skeletor. Now, they have done other Hikari ones that look like a funky Batman figure. There was a Groot. Um, what else was there? Uh, Ghost or uh, Stay Puff? No, oh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. So the Transformers, and, Optimus, and Bumblebee have been done a few times. Yeah. But but uh, all of those I passed on because to me they're okay, but I don't really care about those characters as much. But a Disco Skeletor in a funky collector's piece had to have it. Yeah, I see. You know, every Friday they come out with Hikari Friday is what they call it. Every Friday they'll come out with one or two new pieces, and so far this is the only one that I've had to, to have because uh, they are kind of pricey. You know, for me to order them as a retailer, it's like twenty-five dollars a piece, I think, plus the shipping or whatever. Uh, and if you find them at retail, you're looking at more around the forty to fifty dollar range if they're being nice about it. Um, so yeah, I think some of them have been on eBay even in the eighty to one hundred dollar range. Oh yeah, there's several so, in the hundreds. Yeah, the hundreds of dollars. But oh, more than a hundred. Yeah, multiple hundred. Oh, wow. Yeah. Of the Hikari figures? Yeah. Oh. Because the, there's a limited run. This well, one's 2,000, so that's this one's true. a lot of them. There's a lot of them are 250, 100, or 500. And those ones obviously are more expensive to obtain. All right, what you got there? Okay, so if you remember the last episode, we talked about how uh, cereals are now carrying uh, toys again. We were talking about the Mega Block cars. General Mills. General Mills. So we, yeah, exactly. Which would be, you know, Cheerios, Reese's Puff, Cocoa Puffs, uh, Lucky Charms, Golden Grams, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. So they sent us, uh, after talking about it, they sent us an actual sampling of the cars. So they gave us a cool little pack that, and it shows you, you know, what cereal brands is on here and a picture of the car. When you open it, Ooh. there are all four of the cars in both sticker uh, combinations. Because if you remember, you get the car in one of the boxes and you get two packs of stickers. One for a girl set, one for a boy set, uh, which looks like what Power Rangers and Hello for the Kitty. boys, and Hello Kitty for the girls. Right. So this set shows you the the options and the uh, different methods of stickering, and this is kind of cool just to get. Just that house is cool enough. Uh, you know, they never, we never get anything like this. Yeah, and my kids are actually getting Legos and stuff for Christmas. Um, they've really gotten into Legos this year, spending their allowance on buying these toys. So when they got the car, um, you know, my daughter immediately put the stickers on it and started adding her own pieces to it because it does have nubs. You can take it apart into, uh, I think, like three different layers, three pieces, and then reassemble it however you want. Uh, and the box, the cereal box itself, once you eat all the cereal, presumably, uh, then you can cut up the box and it's got templates on there for making different ramps and stuff. So like for instance, the one box we had, I think it was Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, the box, you would cut the ramp, and so the ramp, you would actually shoot into the box, and then it would like come flying out of the box, but then there was a target, a hole at the end of the box. So the idea was you're zipping it in, going up the ramp, and then trying to get to land in the hole. And it was actually, you know, a pretty fun thing. I mean, we sat there and played for like 20 minutes just with a stupid cereal box and a Mega Bloks car trying to get it in there. So, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, an awesome thing that they're doing, adding that back into the toys. I think it adds value. It's worth paying, you know, the extra dollar for the name brand cereal versus the cheap stuff that we usually buy. And they also sent me a box of Reese's Puffs, and I opened it. And here's the, here's the funny thing about how they set the toys up now. You know, normally back in the day, they used to be in the bottom of the bag. You had to dig through the box. And there would be a toy. Well, of course, you know, all the rules and regulations about food and your kid's allergic to everything. So now what they do is they package it in its own little package. But they put it in my box. And I don't know if it's the same with your box. But on the very top of the box was the toy sitting right there on top of the cereal box. So, which to me seems like a bad idea. Because if somebody really wanted to collect all these cars... All they would have to do at the store is pop a couple tops and take the car out. Just kind of reach in the back, like the back of the shelf, and just rip open, bloop, yeah, pull take, out a car. Take, which seems like a bad idea. That should have been at the bottom <laughs> of the bag. You know, I think ours had kind of settled, so it was about halfway down. Uh, okay. you know, well, mine was so. sitting right on top, which I was like, oh, that's That may be idea. because they, they shipped you a single box of cereal as opposed to it being in a big pallet. Well, a whatever. <laughs> that's how they package them, I'm sure. <laughs> So these are cool, uh, and like I said, there's only four in a set, and if you want both all sticker combinations, then of course you find have to find doubles of each. Uh, but they are, you know, worth collecting, and considering you probably sell them anyways, 
Now, here's the thing, though. There are six uh, different serials that these are in, and there's four cars, which means they're randomly inserted. So you could buy, presumably, one of each box of those serials, and you might get all six of the same car. So if you actually, if you're worried about collecting a set, then you're going to have to just buy a lot of cereal and eat a lot of cereal until you get all the cards that you're Which I, you know, I guess, you know, most people, eat. I mean, obviously it says here that they, uh, Jerry Mills has a uh, worldwide sales of $17.8 billion. <laughs> so yeah, I would say a lot of people are eating a lot of cereal. <laughs> we eat a lot of cereal at our house. Also, cereal is one of just one of those good things. You know, it's a Saturday afternoon, you're just feeling kind of lazy, you haven't had lunch, it's 2, 3 in the afternoon, you know you're going to have dinner in a few hours, and I just have a bowl of cereal, you know. We oh, do that. Really? We do that a lot at our house. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. We don't eat cereal. Oh, I see. Unless it's sent to us free. Harry Krishna doesn't allow for cereal? We do not. Not in our house. Hmm. All right. All right, let's take a look at some of the comments, questions from the last episode. Um, let's see. Uh, Isari4 says, It's always so interesting and funny. It makes me sad when you guys joke that there are like two people watching your videos. Well, three now. <laughs> he says, Thanks, guys. Any items you're going to pick up at the Christmas slash holiday season? Uh, I would like to say before we go into that, well, I mean, yeah, for gifts and stuff, I, I did pick up uh, pretty much all the, the, okay, here, let me back up. <laughs> I don't know where you're going. Usually on Black Friday, mm -hmm. I tend to go shopping for myself. And I say this because I already know what I'm going to buy for my children and wife ahead of time. My wife doesn't really want anything that's on sale. Okay, she always wants she wants three hundred dollar shoes. She wants something that's ridiculous and it's not going to be on sale. Uh, so, so I don't even expect to go there and get that. And my kids don't really care, you know, what they get. They I mean, they have a list of what they want, but it's it's, it's always whatever they sell on TV. So I know it's going to be on sale on some point. So I don't even worry about Black Friday. I go for Black Friday. I go shopping for whatever toys is on sale and whatever uh, you know, movies and games are on sale. And that's basically what I do. So. As I'm going through Toys R Us, as I usually do, I was just flipping through the store. I wasn't going to expect to pick up one or two things, and I couldn't believe how much stuff was on sale uh, on Black Friday that was not in the, the, the flyer. And so I was like, well, I guess I'm doing Christmas shopping. So I picked up a cart, and uh, basically all the hot toy items of the year for a girl got purchased this year by me. Uh, so, so what are the hot toy items for girls? Well, okay, so most of us a lot of arty stuff. Like, uh, we got Beatos. You know those are? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, we got the Living Pet. You know what that is? Oh, the birds? Well, there's there's birds and butterflies. Oh, okay. We got the butterflies. Oh, okay. Uh, we got the Dizzy Bird. Okay. You know what that is? The one that the you talk and it sings together in the yeah. choir or whatever. You get like six of them on there. It'll be like, tweet, 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 so tweet, tweet. So, she got that. I also bought my uh, my older daughter a, uh, a keyboard. Oh, and it was on sale. I was like, mm, okay, we'll do that. Um, I'm trying to think of the. Oh, uh, there were some 3DS games that we did pick up for her because she's obsessed with 3DS. And what's great about this is I was at Toys R Us, and it's going to sound like I'm ripping Toys R Us off of, but honestly, it's their mistake. They had all their value games, which are games that are $19.99 or lower, uh, in a big old mountain tray out on their floor and I went to the store a couple days beforehand to kind of see what I would maybe buy and in there was a game called like Olaf's Quest or Olaf's Revenge or whatever 3DS it's a frozen game and it was in the uh there were $19.99 or less bins there was multiple copies so on Black Friday I went there and it was if you buy two you get the third one for a penny or whatever so I picked up two random games that I thought she'd like, and I bought it, and I got that game. And I went to go check out, and apparently that 3DS game was not supposed to be in that case. It was like a $40 game, and not a $19.99 game. Hmm. However, at this point, I bought, I have a huge stack of stuff. I've spent a couple hundred dollars on toys for my kids. And I'm like arguing with this lady. I'm like, look, it's in the bin. It says, <laughs> buy three anything in this bin and get it. And she goes, well, somebody must have took it out of the case and stuck it in there by mistake, which I'm fine with. I would, I'd be like, okay, fine. However, there was more than one copy in there. 
So clearly it's their fault. And there was a line of people. So there's to a grow. line. There's a huge line of people starting to get it there, and the managers look at me like, like I'm dumb, and <laughs> I'm saying. Well, you know, basically, I was like, "What do you want to do?" Because I'll go back there. I told her, "I'll go back there and I'll pull another copy off that pile if, that, if that's what we have to do." And she goes, "Okay, I'll take care of it." So she clicks it, and I get the game for a penny. Wow! Yeah, you're pretty happy about that. Aren't I you? was like, "That's right!" <laughs> you just yeah. walk out of there like, "Dude, dude, dude. Uh, dude. I slam, put that in my bag." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, matter of fact, I'm gonna go buy some more. <laughs> no, I was pretty proud of myself because you know, I always feel like I get ripped off at retail spots like Toys R Us or you know, right. big box stores. And for one, for me to actually catch a deal, <laughs> I, was, I was feeling pretty good about myself. Like, yeah, talk my way. I was like, I'm a negotiator. <laughs> I'm gonna go in here and set things straight. Toy line negotiator. Yeah. So if you guys have problems with, you know, just let me talk to the manager. I'll smooth it over. So anyways, yeah, I bought some of uh, that stuff, and uh, I think, uh, you know, I stuck away from, I, I steered away, my daughter is obsessed with Frozen and everything, but I steered totally away from Frozen this year. So did you, did you buy any toys for yourself? Uh, oh yeah, back up. So, there was, I went to the Lego aisle, and of all the Lego sets are out currently, like there's nothing that I really care about, and I'm, I'm really disappointed in, in Lego stuff recently. I mean, aside from the superhero stuff, which you know, I'm, I'm trying to get away from sets and stick more to figures now because I'm getting too many sets. Uh, there was one castle theme set that I wanted that I was on the fence about buying. It was one of the kingdoms, one that had the, the little red dragon in it, and I was like, man, if, if I was to catch it one set this year, I'd probably want that one just for the dragon. And of all the sets in the store. It was the only Lego set on sale. Oh, really? And, and, yeah. So I was like, well, that's a sign. And so I bought that. Oh, and then as I'm going over and I'm looking at the Mega Block stuff, uh, have you seen that Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Like knockoff. Uh, yeah, they're, well, it's, it's basically they are have, they Are those Mega no, Blocks? It is. I think it's Mega Blocks. Yeah. It's, it's a major brand. If it's not okay. Mega Blocks, it's connected. It's, not, it's not completely an off brand. Yeah, no, it's, it's a major brand. Uh, but they have the figures. Uh, and then you can play a game with all the figures. You can play like a D&D &D style game with all the toys. And I, I was like, well, you know, I want those things. All of them were fifty percent off, and and all the Creo stuff was fifty percent off. So I bought everything they had for D&D uh, &D as far as the different types. I didn't buy multiples. I just bought you know one of everything they had there. And I must have spent maybe under twenty bucks to catch the whole line. And I bought uh, the Grimlock. Uh, Creo Mega Block set for I think I paid ten dollars for it. Oh really? Yeah, because they were on clearance and fifty percent off. So, boom! That's my Toys R Us. Okay, that, that, <laughs> I don't even know where I was going. With all I'm that. waiting. Just keep going. Just keep talking. Here, I'm, so I'm just uh, you know. And I was buy Toys R Us, and then I went to Walmart and bought some movies and stuff that I didn't really need. And, Target, I went and bought some movies I didn't need. I was kind of really disappointed with Black Friday this year. There wasn't really nothing that I really wanted or needed, and there was nothing that was such a super deal that I just had to have it. And this is probably one of the first years I felt that way. Also, because of the way that uh, things, everything opened around Thanksgiving time, like 6 o'clock instead of late at night, when I went out about 10 o'clock at night, uh, there was like nobody at the stores. I walked in and out of almost everywhere with a little hassle. I didn't have to wait in line anywhere to check out either. First time ever. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of problems getting in and out of places. Although, to be honest, on Black Friday, Philip just wanted to go out and see what it was like because he always heard about Black Friday, Black Friday this, Black Friday that. So we went out, but we weren't really, we didn't have an agenda to really get anything. We weren't going specifically anywhere for a you know particular item so i mean we just had an easy time because we were just kind of out just walking around looking at stuff you know picking up this here and there so it wasn't really that big of a deal yeah he didn't get the experience he needs to rewind about four years <laughs> at toys r us right as they're opening the doors at you know midnight or two we're three dropping three. elbows on bob Goo where trying people to get are in. freaking out and fights are happening in the store oh, that was my best black friday ever
Really? Yeah. Hmm. When people were fighting in Toys R Us, and the fire marshal locked the doors. That was my favorite. <laughs> that was my favorite Black Friday. Hmm. All right. Next up, Scott Neely. He says, I still love the Skeleton Warriors. They were like He-Man, the next generation. Yep. Uh, the skeleton human halfling was the son of Skeletor in my world. Uh, the skeleton hordes, like the Baron, were Skeletor's henchmen. I never had the humans, but if I did, he'd be his son. The girl would be Tila's daughter, who actually had a Romeo Juliet relationship with the son of Skeletor. And yes, the armored dude looks like a Man at Arms ripoff. He would become the grandson of Man at Arms, the son of Tila. There you go, fan fiction. <laughs> he's got it all mapped out. Man. Like he's got a massive thing going on there. So hey, great. That's what you're into. Whatever. Oh, that's great. You should be like, write a story about it or a comic or something. <laughs> Let it go. Fix the brand. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Portal 2099 says, What I would like to see in a vintage Masters of the Universe remake would be the original figures with newer articulation. Not a complete remake like classics. So the same squat figure, but like the neck, wrist swivel, elbow, knee, ankle articulation, I would go for that line. So just add like four more points articulation to the original. So basically add, you know, knees, ankles, wrists, elbows. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I mean, I do okay. like the look of the original figures, the five and a half inch. I do too. I, you know, guys. honestly, I'm right now, for, master, for Masters, I'm ready for just another full-on commemorative uh, repackage of the original figures. Like... I want the, you know, kind of like years ago when I did the commemorative, uh, the long box figures. I'm ready for one of those lines again. I gotcha. I, I think this is what we need. We need uh, a throwback to the vintage figures. Well, they are doing the, the big, massive uh, $75. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm talking about, you know, eight, $7.99, $8.99, whatever they would charge for. Uh, kind of like how Playmates right now is doing the throwback to the, the turtles. turtles. Uh, keep them, and maybe even reprint the cards and, you know, some style. And I would, I'd buy them about everything. I, I would, if they're going to do some sort of reissue, uh, I would want cards that have the original style but look new and different. So there is no one trying to do those shady things like all the guys are trying to do with that commemorative series where they are opening the box and then going, look, I've got a mint on card he meant. You know, yeah, trying well, to sell yeah. for... I mean, maybe have somebody reimagine the same art, like, uh, you know, use the same art idea, but... Maybe do like a foil embossed logo or something so you know that it's, you know... You know obviously, like, you got to change the packaging a little, but I like that. I like that. Well, you actually can do all new art. I just want that package style. We're glued on bubbles. All right. Juron van der Heuvel. <laughs> I, I hope I'm pronouncing that. Uh, no, I'm not. That but, was very rude. Uh, uh, he says, do Exo Squad next time. Well, the problem with that is I don't have any Yeah, I don't have any Exo Squad. If you've got a box of them, feel free to mail them to us. I'd be more than happy to cover them. Um, I don't know if I ever actually had any Exo Squad. I think I have like... I mean, I take that back. I might have one. One or two. But... Uh, man, I feel like they were expensive too. Like, I feel like, you know, in, the, in our previous... Uh, the Ninja Toy Spell series that we did, I, I feel like we were going to do this at some point. We just couldn't get the figures at a decent price to actually do a, a good because I mean the, the mechs just getting the mechs and stuff like first of all I've never seen them anywhere ever yeah I, I never maybe once at like uh, C2E2 or something they may have been like one of them like some guy who had a bunch of old toys may have had one you know sitting in his assortment but it's not like GoBots, Transformers G.I. Joe, Turtles where they're just you know just filling up boxes and boxes. I like to do it. We just don't have a collection to do it, too. And there are lots of small pieces on them, little missiles and things like that. It just seems like it'd be hard to to keep those from so, uh, getting lost. To answer your stuff. question, okay, and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. Now, here are our gifts from Adam Ernest. Um, hey guys, hope you're enjoying Christmas season this year. I hope you all like the gifts. I did my best to get you something you would all would have a great... Oh wait, there's no periods here. Hold on. I did my best to get you all something that you would like. Oh, have please. a great Christmas. Stay safe. Have fun. Hope that you get what you want for Christmas this year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Alright, so. What, what was your gift this year that you asked for? That I asked for? Your, my, your, main your, 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 my main thing? My main thing? 
the uh, the remade uh, classic game systems, the ColecoVision and Intellivision. You asked for both of those. I asked for both. That's of those. like your big Christmas. That's the, that's what I want. I want I want to sit and play ColecoVision. It's fine. For five hours. I was just thinking, I was just want to clarify that was that, your. That, big... that was that was the, the the main thing I asked for. I just wanted those well, so I could play. I asked for a PS4. <laughs> Let's, hope. Let's hope. I I may be getting an iPad Mini, but that's kind of a different situation. Yeah. Wait, were you but I want the ColecoVision what, and the television what, what there. What the hell does so. that mean? I'm getting so. an iPad Mini. <clears throat> that's a different situation. Yeah, something else. Like, not from your wife? Uh, no. From my parents. You got a little bit of two-inch tablets. Look, just because I have two 10-inch Android tablets, four 7-inch Android tablets, uh, an 8-inch Windows 8.1 tablet, and now maybe an iPad Mini, I don't see how that's too much. Like, why? What's the point of all that? Because they, they do things differently and I want to see how they work. You can, go to, you can go to Best Buy and test them out if you want to see how yeah, they work. Yeah, but then you don't own them. Uh, I, like, I like collecting tablets. All right, go ahead. Open your gift. You want me to go first? You go first. All right. So I want to make sure. It, it, just say, it just say dirt on the tag, so I know that this is my... It's heavy, though. Like, it feels like... It's a Borg cube. It, it's, like, no, it's a Borg cube. It, it's, it's a fruit cake. It's a Borg cube. Wait, feel this. Feel how heavy this is. That's a fruitcake. That's a pork cake. That's a fruitcake. It is not a fruitcake. Way off, sucker. <laughs> Marvel Universe Series 4, the complete 180 card set, plus three special cards. Wait, wow. Is that this is, nice? that, I know that's Spider-Man 2099. That's 93. 93. There you go. 93. This is from Treat. Is this like a, I don't like a UK... Oh no! I think you have oh, some of these, oh, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Oh wait! You have this set sitting up in a thing up front, don't you? I have some cards. I don't have a set. Famous battles. Hulk versus X Factor. Let's right, see. Well, now you just messed the set up. <laughs> well, I pulled from the back. Wait, so they're all. This is Marvel. Oh, this is Marvel Universe. Yeah, yeah. Cable and Deadpool or Marvel? What were you thinking? No, no. I was. I didn't think this was Marvel Universe. Apparently, I can't read. <laughs> It's got Moon Knight, Siege, Dead Zone, Wild Pack. Yeah. Wow, complete set. Oh, Skybox. Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> That's why you said treat. Well, because it says treat right on the bottom with the logo. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, Marvel UK. See, right there, Marvel UK. There we go. So, so there you go. So this is the Marvel UK version of the Skybox set. What's different about it? Uh, well, it's got th three all-new categories of comic cards. Three special foil stamped cards, including Marvel 2099 and hologram cards. Are they are they in here, or is that just on the box? No, he took he took, he took out the special cards. You can have the so set, so set. Adam took out the special cards. <laughs> you can have the base set. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Oh, this is cool. I'm gonna be sitting here for like six hours going through all of these. All right, trying to figure them out. On. You do yours. All right, this is gonna be the killing. Oh yeah, bubble wrap. Woohoo! That's what I like. That's what I like. <laughs> oh! Wow, a skeleton warrior. Oh, it's even better the one. Is I, it the one you couldn't I find? Couldn't find, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where do you find that at? Did he say? Well, I guess. Well, no. But <laughs> no. Well, but, there was a note in there, but now it's all gone. No, well, because we were talking about how I'd never seen it anywhere, and so now I have everything. I think I have Maybe it was in the UK. Do I have everything now? Yeah, I think I have everything now. I'm going to have to get uh, nine pocket card pages now to put these. Now I can't even remember what I have, but yeah, I think this is, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm. That's how we complete a set, yo. Well, I guess it's not true. I don't have the two vehicles. The horse and the... I did have I did have the cycle if I sold it. But anyways, yeah, that's cool now. I got uh, all the figures uh, of all the skeleton horse. There you go. Bam! Alright. Um so we ruined it by opening well, I'm not gonna have to open this one. <laughs> well no, it just means you have to buy another set no, no, that no. you leave unopened. No no. How do I get this back in the box? I've already I already decided that skeleton warriors demand to be opened. Are you going to buy extra Skeleton Warriors in the future just to open them? No, I reopened them. Reopen no, them. but I mean, are you going to buy more just to open them and then resell them as open? 
Like you're on a mission to open all the skeleton warriors? No, I'm not on that mission. <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted the the five skeleton skeleton warriors to be on my display. And uh, as soon as I opened the other ones, I decided, well, because normally I don't open my stuff. I keep it pretty much sealed up. But now I'm like, screw it. We're opening up the skeleton warriors. Hmm. All right. Oh, so your toy of the year is the, the fart catcher? <laughs> Or well, fart flinger? Well, technically, I guess it's not out yet, so it'll be a toy of next year. It's the contender for toy of the year. I'd have to say that mine for this year, and you're going to hate it. It's a Transformers 2-pack. It was the uh, Optimus Prime, uh, was the Generations figure, I think it was, 2-pack with the new uh, movie version of the figure that actually transforms into the old-style cab. All right, I got, I got a toy, uh, my toy of the year, and, and let me just say this about this year. This year has been a complete downsizing year for me because I haven't really seen anything. And, and, and I know that's really a, a vague way of throwing this out there because I know there's been stuff this year that's come out that I've, I've actually liked and then wanted. But in general, vague terms, I'm just saying, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I was like, wow, I gotta have that. Except until recently with Playmates and some of the Ninja Turtles stuff they're doing. Uh, now, they are constantly kicking out, uh, they got through the whole movie line, they got through the, the cartoon line, and now they're starting to do uh, remakes of like the NECA stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, similar to the NECA stuff, obviously it's not the same, but it's very similar in style. That old comic book look. Yeah, fun. they're yeah. doing the new packaging and everything, with, and some of them packaging with the a comic that goes with it. Right. But the, the one I've seen so far that I like the most is I believe it's Leonardo is the evolution pack which has the three different Leonardos so if I had to pick a toy of the year I would pick that specific set of the evolution three pack the evolution three packs which I don't know if there's more than one I've only seen the Leonardo so I think that is probably one of the coolest although it's kind of expensive I think it's like $30 but I think well it but is, that's $10 a figure yeah, that's not well bad. In, in my mind, I don't I don't care if there was a hundred figures. In there. <laughs> I would still say twenty nine ninety nine. That's expensive. Well, maybe. Uh, but that that's definitely the set uh, the toy. And I, and, and generally speaking, I don't necessarily go buy turtles. I, I, I like the vintage ones. I just don't. But that one, I would say, would be the the must own toy. So if you see it, I've, buy it. I've really liked the the um, horror themed retro uh, figures. The retro action figures. I don't like. Firefly ones. I don't like the Buffy ones, uh, but I did like the Alien. I've got the Alien, and I've liked the horror ones, the Michael Myers, the Freddy, the Jason, the Pinhead. Like, those were all cool figures. The Scream guy. You know... I thought those uh, were all cool. I, I do have all those. I, I, have, I, I feel so weird about Funko. Like, I, I feel like they are... I feel like it's a thing where they're going to try to throw as much out there as we possibly buy and, and run with the money. Because I can't imagine that you can put out so much stuff so often that they, they do have this tendency where they come up with an idea and then they just milk it for everything it's like okay we've got pop vinyl what else can we do in pop vinyl we'll do everything pop vinyl you want walter white we got walter white you want x files let's do x files you want ninja turtles we're gonna do ninja turtles they're you want lion o we're gonna so do lion o much. i mean they make they make the perfect like if you're buying a gift for somebody obviously funko is, is the go-to toy this year whether it be the reaction figures or the pop vinyl they are the perfect gift to buy somebody when you're not sure what to buy them. Because there is a flavor of the pop vinyl that you can find somebody that likes something in that line. And they're a perfect gift, the item. Hmm. They're like 10 bucks, 10 to 12 bucks. And there is literally a pop vinyl for every piece of nerdy comic book movie uh, pop culture reference in existence today. And they schedule all slew of thousands of new things for next year. So, yeah. all right. Well, before we wrap up, we got one more thing. I have something for you. Oh uh, well, that's not fair because my gift for you hasn't arrived yet. Yeah. Well, my gift for you, revenge. <laughs> Oh, it's not shooting! Oh, oh no, I just, then I'll do this one. There we go. <laughs> They're all stuck in here. Oh. I got, I got two shots out. Show me in the ear. <laughs> oh, look at this defective thing, man. Well, they used to be like rapid fire. You could just shoot them, and then I noticed this year you got to cock them. 
Oh, come on! Why are you looking right at my face with that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this the same gun we have? Uh, it's the new version. This is the Mark VI, or the Rev VI. We, where do uh, we put these guns? Uh, well, in the old store, they were on top of your filing cabinet. In the new store, who... Oh, that one just shot. That's stuck. That's stuck. I can see through all the lights. All right, so, uh, if you want a gift idea, get a bag and put a gun in it. So here's the gift for the light and shoot her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happened to me. <laughs> and it was a good time had by all. Alright guys, that's going to do it. Don't forget, if you want to uh, check out more of our videos, check out some of our comic reviews, toy reviews, all that great stuff, you can go to popculturenetwork.com. You can also email us, killing at popculturenetwork.com or dirt at popculturenetwork.com. You can also go to jointheforums.com, the official forums of the Pop Culture Network. Did you just hit the camera? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, you can call our 24-hour voicemail line. It's area code 217-953-4025. Happy holidays, suckers. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Alright, here we go. I got one more shot. Yeah, this thing works great. Good job, nerf. <laughs> it's like playing Russian roulette. Does the dart come out or not? There we go. Woo!